Australia's borders are closed to most travellers due to COVID-19, but I'm an Australian citizen and I had to go home for a funeral. And I'm living and working as a photojournalist for CNN right now in Hong Kong. I left Hong Kong in late July and normally the airport is packed. I was absolutely astonished to see how empty the airport was. Things from there just got more eerie. Countries all over the world are asking travellers to quarantine on arrival. You might be curious as to what that might look like. Well, that depends on how strict the rules are for where you're headed. Some countries, like South Korea, require you to download a tracker app on your phone. That's to make sure you stay put in one place for 14 days. The US and other countries, on the other hand, rely on people just to behave responsibly. And someone may check in on you by phone or even swing by your quarantine location to see if you're doing what you said you would. That's not the case in Australia. When I got off the plane at Sydney Airport, there were military escorts and medical personnel to greet me. I got an empty bus that drove me to a luxury hotel in the central business district. Sounds nice, but just wait. I had to spend two weeks in this 32 square metre room. With few exceptions, travellers to Australia have to quarantine at a government designated facility and most pay for it themselves. Anyone who books a flight to Australia after July 12 has to pay just a little over 2,000 US dollars to be stuck in a room for two weeks. To pass the time, I set up a routine that included working out, catching up with family, reading, watching TV, and one day I got so bored that I decided to get creative with the paper plates and cutlery. Being stuck in a room was surreal, especially since this country has always been my home. I took my freedoms as a citizen for granted until that moment. Eventually, I made it through the two weeks and I was able to leave and I made it to the family funeral. 